Welcome to this Python tutorial on errors, logging and debugging, which is a tutorial that I recommend doing very early on in your Python career. At this time I will assume that you have read the Python introduction so that you have some Python installation running or you know how you can run Python somehow on your computer through a web application or directly locally. And I would also assume that you know what data, data types are and they can use the print command. If you ran through the first tutorial on data types, you saw that we got some types of errors at some point. What you have seen, for example, were the key errors and the type errors. So key errors occurred, for example, when I tried to call in a dictionary a key that is not available or that was not available. A type error was when I tried to run an operation on a variable that was not a string. So I tried to print uh, or I tried to concatenate an integer number directly to a string. So that did not work. That does equally not work like that command here. There are other errors like an import error where um, you get an import uh, that you get if you try to import a module that does not exist. So the almighty module does not exist and if you try to import it you will get an error. Uh, other options are that you get an indentation error. So indentation error means that you are not using the correct spacing in front of a line. That is in particular important when you're getting to functions or any statement keywords um, or any loops where you write a, a statement and then the next line you need to keep an indentation that is typically for spaces or just one tab sign. Most modern um, interpreters automatically do that but you can still get these errors if you're trying to just use some basic text editor that does not automatically recognize that. You may get an index error if you try to access something that is out of the range. So if you try, for example, here to uh, access an element in a list that is outside the range of the list, that here will run into an error. Why? Well, recall again, a list starts counting from zero. So this list here has only elements 0 and 1 that you can call and if you try to call here number 2 it is out of range so you get an index error. If you try to print a variable that is not defined you will get a name error. Uh, you will get a value error if you are trying to type an incorrect data type to use and you will get a zero division error if you are trying to divide by zero because that will not work mathematically. There are a bunch of more errors that can occur and I invite you to have a look at the Python website to dive a little bit deeper into error messages and types of errors that you can meet. Why is it necessary to know the type of errors? Well, first it helps you to debug your code because you can see what could be possible or what could have gone possibly wrong um, but it also helps you to directly point others that are going to try to reuse your code um, towards the errors they might have made. So to run, get a little bit more examples I will uh, now switch to the Jupyter notebook here um, where you see here again that same list but this time here as a Jupyter notebook running. So we need now our Jupyter Notebooks to add some live code elements. While well, you recall, you can also do that directly in the website. Um, it's probably preferable to do that locally. So to troubleshoot an error before it can occur, I strongly recommend working with these try except statements. So if you're writing a code and you're, you know that there is a section that could be vulnerable or that could be critical for any other user or even yourself if you're using your code later on, maybe in six months, 12 months, three years, um, then it's useful to have these try except statements. The way how you use it is you are using here a try statement, then comes here your code block, 
Before that code block, there is an indentation. So recall that indentation error that you might need. So you will need here for white spaces or a tab sign. And then in the next section, the try statement requires an accept statement. So that's absolutely necessary. Otherwise, that um, statement here will crash itself. And that's exactly not what you want. The accept statement should then be specified here with an error type. And then you define here what your code should do when it encounters that such an error type. So let's look at an example how you would implement a specific troubleshooting through a try and accept statement. So I would write here try, so it's try statement, followed by these four space signs in the next line. And then I'm assigning here a variable that I call x. And I want the user to input here an integer values. An integer value for scoops. So how many scoops of ice cream do you want? If I run that, and now I'm adding here an integer. Put 3, press enter. Great. Digested it. Now, if I would enter here something like nonsense, so 1, it cannot understand and should basically crash. And it does crash. So we'll jump here uh, to that value error statement because I did not enter an integer here. It could not do anything with it. So it jumped here to the uh, exception and there was, what's that? Sorry, please try again. Hmm? If you are not sure about the error type, you can add also an else statement to check for different uh, errors that can occur. So let's see, let's say you have a dictionary. In the dictionary you have your key and you're not sure if the key is defined, okay. Then it should jump you to the key error. So it should return a key not found of the key error. For that you will probably have a function defined there that is key not found where you might have an error list and a larger code set. Otherwise if there is an unknown error for any reason, maybe the dictionary doesn't exist for other reasons, then it should return you the handle value function that you define maybe somewhere else. If the thing that is happening is not a big deal for the following code, you can also add here just a pass statement in the exception loop. So let's say we want here to, uh, to define the later on a more complex formula or something like that. Um, and we are not yet here in a code block. So that's an unfinished code block. Then we can add something here like uh, this here, where we do just use a, um, a pass statement in the exception. So that code block here doesn't print anything. So we won't see, get any feedback from the console because what it does just here, it goes here to a equals 5, it assigns, assigns a, then it runs here into an error because we didn't define b, but it, so it goes here to the exception and that doesn't do anything because there's a pass keyword. That pass statement can be very useful also in other contexts when we're getting later to functions or classes. So just think about you building a big construction of functions and classes and you cannot just code everything at the same time. So you may just create a call to a function then you define a function name and then that function just put pass for the moment that you're coding another function. So your code will still be functional during that time but doesn't do anything. So having try accept statements are is very useful in a code but you may also want to communicate that in a more persistent way and that is where logging becomes useful so you have already seen that you can use the print statement to print something to your console but if you want to see in a longer perspective or a longer time what happened to your code and you haven't been in front of your screen or your script crashed you want to know why and the log file through the logging package might help you you may have also already seen that in software that after running printed you 
a little pop-up window and show, said, told you, please have a look at the log file to identify errors or whatever. For using log files or for creating log files and working with them, writing messages to a log file, you're going to use the logging package that you can import with import logging. This here is how you would configure it, and I will directly go here to the code block example to exemplify what I'm talking about. So in the first place, I'm importing the logging package. Then I'm configuring, configuring the log file name. So I'm doing that by going writing a logging dot basic config. So because basic config is um, a class here of the logging package, that will work. So I'm defining a file name. I'm defining a format. And in the format here, I'm adding first the ALC time. So every message should contain first the time and what it was written and then the message content. So that is very helpful also to see how long did one part of the code run. Using a file mode write, which makes sense because otherwise you cannot write it, then I'm using here as a level, the debugging level. In addition, I'm adding here a stream handler because I do not only want the messages written to have written the messages to a log file, I also want to see that maybe still in the console like it was a print message and that I can do here with a, uh, by adding a stream handler. Now I am adding here some messages that can be written to my log file. For instance here, um, the debugging message, uh, so in the debug level where I can write here this message is log the log file. Um, info message, less severe information is also locked and the warning is locked anyway. So if such messages are locked or not depends on what you wrote here. If you're, you're using logging.debug.info, warning, error and so on. So the severeness here will then depend on what, you, uh, what the log file will, will write. In the debug mode all these messages here are written. So if I run now that code block here, I will create a log file that is called my logfile.log. And that log file will look like that. To add something more useful to that here, let's exemplify that. So I'm adding here a variable that I call text. Now I'm trying here to uh, make the power of uh, to make the power of two of a, which will not work. Huh? Mathematical operator applied to a string that is doomed to crash. Um, so I'm getting here a type error and I want the type error to be written to the log file. At the end of my script, I'm using here logging.shutdown. This is absolutely necessary to release your log file. Otherwise, your log file will run on and on and on. It will just get longer and, or you may not be even be able to modify it or move it around um, in your code structure. So if I run that code block now, then I get here well, actually I ran already twice. So that's why I'm getting you these stop and double messages. And that log file here will now live in my Jupyter uh, directory. So that's here the log file that I just created. Huh? And that's just written here. Why is it not written double here and twice here? Well, because I ran it twice. I added two times the stream handler. So that's what you see here two times. Um, but I deleted the first log file. So to not have a double here, I need to restart my Python kernel, which I could basically do here by uh, restarting it in uh, JupyterLab. With the error types and knowing how to lock error types, you have all the technical basis and basics to deal with error. But if you ran a super, long, if you wrote a super long code, you're running it, you will for very sure run into an error and at the beginning it's probably very hard to trace back where the error come from, comes from. And that whole uh, task of looking where the error come, came from and fixing these errors is called debugging and that can sometimes be a little bit stressful. You can simplify your debugging task if you use the exceptions so that these try accept statements correctly always with the correct specification of the error type. And then there are still some other um, remarks here that I want to make. Um, that is, when you're writing your code, 
try to work with descriptive variable names and also I will come to that in a later tutorial use a consistent style for your code. So for example for variables and functions only use small letters and only for classes use this camel case with capital letters. Makes things much easier to trace back. When you get an error message read it completely. Try to understand it. If you want you can then also come back either in the Jupyter notebook or here on the website and read what is the error that you found here. Most of the errors are probably somewhere in that range of this uh, of a small list here. If you want to find more, um, go and please visit here the Python website and you can find here many more um, exceptions and error types. Once you ran your code and it ran at least without an error message, there could still be uh, some troubles in terms of if the output that you wanted is correct. So I would recommend if you're dealing with larger data sets, first use just a small data set and try to run your code on that small data set and check if the output that you're getting is reasonable or if it makes sense. Before you start coding, you can also decrease your debugging load by uh, using a structured approach. So take just a piece of paper, draw your code with a simple pen and draft it, make little boxes, then you know functional relationships that you know helps your creativity and also is the baseline for something that's called an UNL, UML diagram or Unified Modeling Language Diagram. Um, I invite you to have a look here at that link um, to see some examples also of how a UML diagram looks like. And then there's the ultimate alternative that you can use and that is incubation. That means if you're really stuck in front of your screen, leave it. Go into a forest or walk around or take a walk in your, in your, in your quarter neighborhood or whatever you want. Try to get to other ideas, do something else, meet with friends, talk with people, just tell what is your, with your, what is your problem or do anything that uh, you feel comfortable about and has a request on your lower brain occupation and sometimes that's how you get these overnight solutions for your code. That's it for errors, debugging and troubleshooting errors in the sense of debugging. Thanks for watching this video.